Okay, so this is all about loci in the complex plane. This is the second part. Uh, in the first one, we looked at loci of circles in the complex plane. And this one, we're looking at uh, straight line equations written in um, loci form. So um, let's just jump straight in with an example. So here we've got the modulus of z minus 3 is equal to the modulus of z minus 5. That ends up being a straight line. In fact, it's a very special straight line. It's related to the 3 and the 5. Um, but let's, let's see what happens when we try to convert this into a Cartesian equation. Um, we convert it into a Cartesian equation in exactly the same way, same process we did for circles. So how do we start doing that? Do you remember how we started to convert from complex form into Cartesian form? Yeah, the first thing we have to do is to replace the x's, so the z's, with the x plus i y's. So we're getting in there the x and the y's in the Cartesian equation. Um, so let's plug those in here. Oh, no, sorry, x. There we go. Um, now we need to group the real parts and the imaginary parts because we need to compute the modulus and the modulus of course is going to be this squared plus this squared square rooted equal to the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared square rooted and okay the square root size get rid of the moduluses you may wonder why I even put them in the first place. So I had to get rid of these square root signs. You may think, why have I even put this in the first place? Well, we'll see when we look at later examples um, in part three. Okay, and we keep going. So I'm going to assume that expanding brackets is something you can do. You should be able to expand these kind of brackets very quickly. Um, I'm using the fact that the binary potential says it's that times that times two um, and this is this squared and this squared. Don't forget the middle parts. It's amazing still how many people miss out that and do x squared plus nine. Um, oops if you do that. Now we can cancel. There's a y squared here and a y squared here and there's an x squared here and x squared here. All I'm doing is going to simplify this now uh, into some standard form that we're used to seeing so we can interpret what it looks like as an equation. Keep going because we can move these 10 x's to this side. Oh, 10 minus 6 is 4, isn't it? And then we can do 25 minus 9, which is 16. Um, and then divide by 4. Okay, so this is a very straightforward equation. It's just x equals 4, um, which means we go to the x-axis at 4. And it means we want the line where we have always got 4. So the y value changes, but x is always 4. So we can do that. We can do that for any of these kind of equations. It'll be very easy. Um, just take a moment to look at the 3 and the 5. Could we have got there faster? Could we have predicted it in some way? Um, the answer, of course, is yes. This 3 would go here, again, always the opposite of the sign, right? This 5 goes here. And this 4 is exactly halfway between them, and for good reason. In fact, all these points are equal distance from 3 and 5. This is the what's known as the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector of 3 and 5 and each point on that line um, is equally spaced away from 3 and 5 um, which which makes sense hopefully let's just have a look at another example see if we can um, predict what we're going to get and then see if we can work out and see if we get the same thing as what we expected so um, here remember that it's the opposite of the sign that's going to be a plus 3i we're not drawing and this is going to be a minus 3 we're not drawing and what we're saying is that it's the perpendicular bisector of those two points that the two numbers we're looking at so here it was 3 and 5 here it's 3i and minus 3 the perpendicular bisector will be draw a line between these two find halfway draw a line that goes through at the perpendicular and because of the position here, the symmetry here, I can tell that line's going to go through the origin. And I can tell actually that line's going to have a, a gradient of minus one. Um, maybe you can see that. So 
let's just see if we can prove that again doing the same process. Um, I'm going to skip a few steps here just to save space and to save time. Um, I would advise that you try to work this through yourself. Um, perhaps pause the video now and try and work this through yourself and then follow the video through and see if you get the same answer. Um, so I'm going to skip straight in and go x plus i y minus 3i is equal to x plus i y plus 3. If I group together the real terms and group together the imaginary terms and do the same thing here, real terms and imaginary terms, I know the next thing I'm going to do after doing that is square them. So I'm going to square the real parts and the imaginary parts. And then I'm going to add them together and I'm going to square root them. Of course, if I square root them, all I'm going to do afterwards is square them again. So I should get something looking like that. Oh, there's a lot of steps been skipped there. That was cheeky of me to do so quickly. If you didn't follow that, it's not surprising. But you should be able to follow this one through here and do the same thing here and then check to get the same thing. Maths is not a spectator sport, guys. So you do need a pen and paper to get out and have a go. If you've not done that yet, pause it now and do it. If you have done it, brilliant. Um, we'll continue. So now I'm going to expand these brackets. And then we're going to cancel terms. So we can cancel this x squared with this x squared and cancel this y squared with this y squared. Uh, and this 9 with this 9. Bloody hell. Loads is going. Um, minus 6y is equal to 6x. If I divide through by 6, we get that. And if I just change the signs, as in times in by minus one on both sides, um, I should get what I said I get to begin with, which is always nice. Um, that is what we wanted, y is equal to minus x. Um, so yeah, it is the perpendicular bisector of these two lines. Um, why is that? Let's take a moment to, to just see why that works. So... The reason that's working out for us is because of what this term really means. Um, let's have a look and see what, what does Z minus C really mean. Now we can do that by thinking about the complex numbers as being 2D vectors. Um, so C may be a point over here. Let's just draw an arrow to C and call this the vector C. As in going from the origin to C is a vector. Uh, if I pick a point Z, go over here and draw Z. It's going to some random point. This is where I'm going to change around. C is fixed, but Z is variable. Um, this arrow going from C to Z, that's actually the complex number Z minus C. Maybe Z and C is because they're confusing. The reason that's the case is because to go from here to here, you have to go backwards along C, as in minus C, and then go along this one plus Z. So minus C plus Z. Okay. If I put modulus signs around it, what I'm saying is not this arrow, but I'm saying the length of this arrow, how long that arrow is. So going from C to this point is a length of Z minus C. So let's just draw the point C on again and draw the point D on. And I said that the answer was going to be the perpendicular bisector of C and Z, as in draw the line between C and D, uh, sorry, perpendicular bisector of C and D. Draw the line between C and D, uh, go halfway, draw the perpendicular line, all these points I said would be equally spaced from C and D. That's the answer. Well, yeah, that makes sense, because if this is the point Z over here, then that arrow going from there to there is z minus d. And that arrow going from there to there is z minus c. And this equation is saying that they're the same length. Their moduluses, those arrows, are the same length. As in z is equally spaced from c and d, which is what we mean by the perpendicular bisector. The perpendicular bisector is all points which are equally spaced from two other points. So that's what this equation up here means. Now this part here is really more for interest to try to get some geometry. So let's just go back to the original sheet. This is the kind of thing that you need to, have to do. You have to take your complex numbers and convert them into Cartesian equations. Okay. You have to quickly draw them as well in some instances. So best of luck with that, and I will see you for part three next time.